There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge. All right, what's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades. Back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week. We actually had a really good list last week. I recommend you go tune into the last video, get some educational value out of it because all the technical setups we had for calls, all four of them played out. It worked out very well. So hopefully this week we'll have just as good of a week. Usually I start these videos out with the economic calendar and some economic data, but this week we really don't have any big data sets. We do have retail sales and then a lot of Fed speakers. We basically have Fed speakers every day of the week. So I won't be doing the economic calendar this week just due to time purposes. I have a wedding to go to tomorrow. And as well, there's really not anything important. Just know there's Fed speakers every day this week and we do have retail sales as well. So before we get into the setups, let's go over the seasonality real quick. We're pretty much expecting upside in terms of the dates we had last week historically, and we did exactly that. This week from the 16th to the 20th, we do average a 0.43% return, which is pretty good. Not seeing any dips historically here. If we go to the last 15 years, we average a 0.44% return. So it's positive there as well. And then the last 10 years, looks like we average a plus 0.3% return. So not bad at all. Looks like this week could be pretty good just based off seasonality. Obviously, macro risks and, you know, the war in the Middle East going on right now, all that, that does not get baked into seasonality because it's just something you can't predict. Some seasonality can't predict either. So I'll just see how that goes. A lot of tensions overseas, lots of crazy market movement, but we did have a very good week. I actually had a green day every single day this week, except for Friday. And I took a couple losses on day trades, trying to buy the dip, just sticking to the strategy, sticking to the trend. And we did pretty heavy and lots of whipsaw on Friday. So unfortunately I broke my winning streak on Friday, but that's okay, that's trading. Hopefully we'll have a good one next week. So for our first one, we're looking at McDonald's here. It's pretty simple. We do have 245.73 here, this is major support. It looks like it's trying to make some sort of double bottom. Obviously a double bottom won't be confirmed until you get over the resistance, it'll be at 253. And then once it gets over that, if it makes a base off that, it can go higher and that'd be a confirmed double bottom. So it gets confirmed at the breakout but either way still holding support good i feel like this could be a nice little speculative setup up to the resistance at least once it gets up there you can determine where it goes next if it starts rejecting you may want to take profit be careful if it starts getting over start looking for that bigger move to the upside over 253 that'll confirm a double bottom take you up to 259 probably like 260. so mcdonald's has just been getting slammed obviously it's really been in a pretty gnarly downtrend. This little article here is showing that we actually had a 17% dip total. I'm not sure if they're talking about from all time highs or from 52 week highs or what, but that's a pretty big dip. That's a pretty big downtrend, 17%, especially for a value stock like McDonald's, which really usually doesn't have that big of volatility and it really doesn't move that much to begin with. So this is actually pretty much at a discount, I would say on the short term. If we're talking price to earnings ratios and all that, I'm not sure what the price to earnings ratio is on McDonald's, but they do pay a dividend. So it's a good long-term hold pretty much. It's, it's a good long-term hold and it always has been. But we're looking at options on this. So MCD looking at calls, as long as it doesn't break under 245.73, which is that pretty much that double bottom support and your full risk off level, as long as it doesn't, doesn't get under that, this is a pretty good setup to start going up, have a dead cat bounce. Obviously slow stochastic starting to cross down. So I'd like to see that cross back up, but that could be lagging as well. As long as we're holding support, this looks pretty good for more upside. So McDonald's looking at calls, just make sure you keep your risk off under 245.73, maybe just 245 flat. All right, next we're going into CVX. This is a oil play energy. It's actually one of the biggest holdings in the XLE ETF. So if you trade XLE, Exxon and CVX are the two biggest holdings. They have the most waiting. So with the war in the Middle East and tension starting to rise, obviously CVX and Exxon and XLE, any oil play right now is pretty much in somewhat of a bull market lately. Dips are getting bought, crude oil futures are blasting off, and there's just a lot of volatility in the energy markets right now. So I really wanted to get a piece of this move, hopefully, because I, I haven't traded energy much lately at all. And CVX looks really good here. So you got to test one, you got to test two, you got to test three bounce, and this is a test four bounce. 
So this uptrend line looks pretty good. I would say it, it'll probably get up to this little downtrend line and it'll need to break out of that. But if it can get up to that and break out, this would be a nice little wedge setup and it could try to break higher. Obviously this setup would go invalid if it starts breaking under the uptrend line, which is your lower line right here, which has four tests. So if it starts breaking under that and 160, you might want to be careful with that. But this does look like it's getting pretty tight and it could get up to this little downtrend line at least. It really need to break out of that for more upside. So this is kind of tight right here. So it may be wise to wait for it to break out to the upside. You could even right click, hit add alert. We can call it breakout, hit create, and then that'll be there for the future. So once it breaks out of that, We'll have a nice energy play and it'll be able to break out to the upside. So CVX, I'm mostly aiming to play calls on this, but obviously it really needs to break out of that. And then we can look for upside right now. It might need to form this wedge, but it would be really nice to get some energy exposure here, especially with all the tensions going on. And I really haven't caught any of the move in the energy sector. So that'd be pretty nice. CVX looking at calls, be patient. Set that alert at the downtrend line, wait for the breakout. If you want to be more patient and have more confirmation, waiting for that breakout is the way to go. All right, and last but not least, for our individual tickers, we're looking at DraftKings here. So you can see it's a really nice wedge. You got a test one, test two, test three, coming down for test four. You also have a test one, test two, test three for the downtrend line. So this is a classic wedge. It's a symmetrical wedge, it's not confirmed. A wedge is not confirmed until it breaks out, obviously. So you don't know if this is a bearish symmetrical wedge because it hasn't broken down to the downside. And you don't know if it's a bullish symmetrical wedge because it hasn't broken out to the upside. But that's not what we're playing. We're not playing the breakout on this at the moment. Since it's coming back down to the uptrend line, you can see I drew this arrow here. I may be looking for a bounce and we can see that move back up to the downtrend line and try to fill up this little cell imbalance. Obviously, if it starts breaking under that, you could switch and go to puts, start leaning a little bit more bearish because if it breaks under that, that's going to confirm a bearish symmetrical wedge. But I hope you understand that the fact that it's at the uptrend line right now and it can hold up, that's why we're looking for a potential bounce and maybe a move back up to this. And since it's not broken down yet, we're not looking at puts yet. If it gapped down under this on Monday for some reason and it starts opening under this, there's a good chance it could just start flushing down. Maybe it'd bounce back, test the line, then go lower. Maybe it'd just straight flush down. But I just want you to understand that it's not broken down yet. That's why we're not looking at puts yet. You want to wait for that confirmation. Right now, it's right at the uptrend line. And there's a good chance it can hold up here and it'll try to bounce and head back up to the upper downtrend line. So DKNG, looking at calls mostly, but willing to switch if it breaks down this uptrend line right here and forms that symmet symmetrical bearish wedge. As long as it breaks under that, I would be willing to flip my bias and go short. Obviously, that would make your long setup invalid as well if it starts breaking under this. So this could go either way. But right now, the first focus is calls just because we're not broken down yet and we're right at the uptrend line. Maybe we would need to see a little confirmation, some type of bounce at this line and a nice bullish close and that I'd head back up higher. But either way, if you take the risk right here, keep your risk off under the uptrend line, it really wouldn't be that bad if you did get stopped out. And then you could switch to puts after that. So DKNG, looking at both calls and puts, but right now focusing on calls just because it's still holding the uptrend line. All right, now onto the indexes this week. I'm just gonna go over SPY and QQQ. I'm gonna do a little experiment, see if I can get this video done in less time because a lot of my videos I do like doing you know, the full thing where we do SPY, QQQ, IWM, DXY, and VIX. But for time purposes, and maybe see if we can get a little bit more views, I'm gonna see if, if I cut down the time, if maybe we can just go ahead and go over SPY and QQQ and leave the IWM, DXY, and VIX out. So I'm sorry if you do enjoy that portion of the video where we go over the other indicators as well, but we'll still go over the SPY and the QQQ, and I may re-add it in future videos, but right now, for time purposes, as well as just an experiment to see if we can get maybe a little bit more retention and more views on our videos. I'm gonna just do the SPY and QQQ for right now for time purposes. So for this week, the main level of support I'm watching is this 431.23. It's got a point right here. You got a resistance area right here. So this is kind of like a back test level. And then you can see it actually bounced on this candle right here as well. We had a brief break under it with this bar right here and then reclaimed over it. Very choppy day on Friday. And that's why I got stopped out a couple times. It's very hard to trade this. It's just very whipsaw -y. Every time we, you know, started bouncing off the support, we started getting sellers picking back up. They'd take it under, bring it back over, take it under, bring it back over, just over and over again. Another cool thing about this setup 
for this bar. There's a little sort of wedge forming right here. So you can see it actually poked out of that and it closed outside of it. So as long as we're staying over 431 on Monday, opening above it, or just staying over the 430s in general, I feel like we could see a nice little pop on this. Maybe head back up to the 437.22, which is this double top. It would probably be a triple top once we got up there, if it can get up there. But as long as it's holding over that 431.23, which is this point right here and this point right here, uh, also a little support right here. So you got multiple tests on this support on this previous resistance as well. And this 431.23, probably down to 430 as well, because you got a little wick low right here. You can see it's at 429.88. We'll just call it 430 flat. As long as it's staying above this zone, I feel like there's a good chance structure is still holding and it'll try to go back up, follow the seasonality trend and start blowing shorts out of the water. Because obviously we've had a really good rally. We rallied, uh, all dip buys were working pretty much every single day. So now we're starting to get into maybe a structure or a consolidation phase some type of you know accumulation phase to where it's not just going to trend up all the time and it may require a little bit of choppiness before it gets that blast off move to the upside but this little wedge looks pretty good as long as we're staying over 431 23 spy looks really good to go up maybe it could go lower if it starts breaking under 430 but that's not really the focus for me right now it's still holding structure everything looks you know pretty decent there really wasn't that heavy of a sell-off the vix did go up like 20 percent though and hit the 20s so that could be a little concerning but if volatility rejects at the 20s again like it did last time it'll just repeat what it did last time have a sharp sell-off on the vix spy will go higher and then we'll need to get over 437.22 before projecting anything higher so that's for the spy looking for more upside i showed you the seasonality pretty much matches my bias as well as as long as we're holding over these structures, everything looks gravy. And we can see that move to the upside. So it's buy. Probably going to stick to looking at calls this week on it. Usually for day trading, I stick to in the money contracts. I look for those high delta contracts. I trade about anything over 0.60 of a delta. And it's just so much easier to manage. If you do take a loss, it's not as bad because you are in the money. The delta is not that bad. And you're still relatively in the money, even if it dips. So it's buy. Looking at calls still. Needs to stay over 431 looking for more upside. All right, and last but not least, for QQQ, we actually were looking for a move up to this supply. I thought this looked better than SPY last week, so I was looking for more upside on QQQ, and I wasn't as sure on SPY last week because we were at supply, so I just kind of left that area alone. I didn't really make a projection on SPY that last week, but last week we did have a nice little projection on QQQ to go higher up into supply at at least 369, and we did do that plus more. And we actually ran into this downtrend line. So you got a test one, test two, test three. This is a test four rejection, which is crazy that we made it all the way up there and, and it rejected perfectly. We actually had some type of bond auction and that sent the 30 year yields like skyrocketing like instantly. And this is when we dumped. So the yields just totally screwed us this day. And then we had that follow through the next day as well, because Friday we closed down over 1% on the NASDAQ. So, and that was regardless of, the bond yields actually were down, which is crazy because usually the narrative lately for the bonds is once the yields are, you know, lower, we usually start rallying and everything looks okay again. And we start, you know, rallying with the bonds as well, but not Friday. The yields were down. The DXY really wasn't even up that much. And regardless, we still, still dumped. Spot didn't close down too bad, only half a percent, but NASDAQ, which is really sensitive to, you know, bond yields and interest rates. It actually closed down the most, despite the yields closing down as well. So very interesting day on Friday. I didn't really understand it as much. And that's why I was trying to buy the dips on Friday, because the yields were down so much. And I thought, you know, it'd be a pretty easy trade. And there was less macro risks. Made it a little bit easier to try to buy the dips, but kept dipping. Didn't work. So that's unfortunate. So for this week on QQQ, need to hold 362.95 or the 363 we were talking about last week. I mentioned as long as it's staying over this, it's still bullish and it would go up into supply. Same thing this week. It might try to dip maybe a little bit lower into that, but I mean, it doesn't have to. If Monday, for some reason, we gap up, it'll just open up around this area. We're still over the 363 and it might just try to head back up into supply. Maybe try to head back up into the downtrend line as well. Not sure how fast they would get back up here after a drop like that. You can't really put a timeline on the market, but as long as it's holding over this 363, everything looks pretty good. If it starts breaking under that, this is a straight buy and balance candle and it'll fill back down into the 354.71 that we've been covering. This is that structure low I've been talking about. This is the area I've been mentioning. You could you know, be looking to add a dips 
and worked a couple weeks ago, worked last week as well. That's the area of focus, just that 363. That's the main level. Look for that to hold up. If that doesn't hold up, you can start looking for more downside and that probably to follow through with this downtrend line rejection as well. But otherwise, just kind of stick into the seasonality, expecting this dip to get bought maybe, as well as 363 hopefully will hold as a back test level and we can go back up. Same thing for SPY. Hopefully we can go back up on that as well. Got that little 30 minute wedge. You got three or 431 and the 430 is holding good. So nothing too bad. Friday, obviously maybe a little bit bearish, but nothing too crazy. We really just took out the previous day lows. The weekly bar, maybe a little bit ugly. If you look at it, you got a pretty heavy top wick right here. So not the prettiest candle, but hopefully we won't see too much follow through to the downside after that. Usually these last couple months on the seasonality, they're pretty straightforward. Obviously, with macro risks and interest rates, we're in a pretty different environment, so anything could happen. But you can see these last, you know, months of the quarter are pretty good and you know pretty smooth. A lot of you know Wall Street bankers, a lot of money managers are trying to you know get that performance bonus at the end of the year. Everything looked pretty gravy. Their performance looked good for their clients, and you'll see that bid towards the end of the year. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It'll be a little bit shorter this week. We'll see if, you know, maybe it helped a little bit on views. Maybe it helped people stay and watch a little bit longer since it's not as long. But I hope you guys still got as much value out of my previous videos as you will with this one as well. If you want, go back and look at my last video. We go over the individual tickers. We go over everything. That's usually our usual format. But let me know if you like that better or if you like this shortened video better with less indexes and just the individual tickers. And then, you know, I'll throw seasonality in there as well. So I love you guys. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our Xtrades YouTube channel. Go check out our web platform or Discord server at Xtrades. If you want to go check out the web platforms, go to, go to app.xtrades.net. Check us out. Follow traders, follow seasoned traders, follow rookie traders, follow whoever you want. Post your own ideas, get market analysis from people and socialize. It's a nice little social trading platform. So go check us out, app.xtrades.net. Love you guys, and I'm out.